Welcome to the Revision Wizards podcast. I'm Miss Catherine M.H., and I am joined by my fellow whatever you call a magic person and co-host V.E. Griffith. This is episode 30, and we're talking to certified rebel and author Sasha Black, joining us all the way from the United Kingdom. Sasha writes nonfiction under her own name and has just started a new pen name for her lesbian sapphic fantasy romance, Ruby Row. Her first two Ruby Row books, A Game of Hearts and Heists, and a game of romance and ruin are out now. Today we're talking to her about her writing and editing process, and we're very excited to bring this conversation to you. So here we go. Okay, so we have a new and exciting guest today. If you would please tell us your name and your pronouns. Hello, my name is Sasha Black, and my pronouns are she, her. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So I asked you here today, or we asked you here today, to... uh, to uh, talk about your editing process. Um, once you get to the end of the first draft, sort of what's the mechanic from where you go from there? I know you, you're you a speed demon writer if you could do 2,000 words in an hour, uh, which is what I've heard you talk about. So Yeah, so I mean, I would say that I average 2,000 words an hour. If I'm writing on my own, it might be 1,700 words an hour. And if I'm writing with friends, it could be up to 2,600 an hour. Um, so I obviously prefer... Your competition. Yeah, I obviously prefer to write with people because I write faster. Um, But so I always average it at 2000. Because if I'm like, if I'm not tired, that, you know, and I've had enough caffeine, and I know exactly what's coming, then I can write at about 2000 on an 2000 an hour, even on my own. Uh, But to get those higher levels, I have to be writing with other people and not just anyone either. It's got to be someone who, um, I don't know, meet certain requirements, <laughs> including like their <laughs> level of competitiveness. So like I, I write with one of my patrons who's top five competition um, and uh, we just sm- smack talk and give each other shit all the time. And that basically speeds us up. So like, I, obviously not for everybody, uh, clearly, but uh, yeah, we're savage bastards. So, so there's that. Um, in terms of editing, the interesting thing is I tend to edit about the same pace um, and it depends which edit I'm on. So if I'm on like my first substantive edit, then I will edit about 2000 um, words an hour. Sometimes I'll edit slightly more, depends if I'm like, I can't, there's nobody watching whilst they edit because it's much, you can't really edit in those community like web web rooms. Um, but still, if I know that somebody, I'm checking in and accountable with somebody, I will still edit faster than, than if I'm on my own. Um, and then if I am on like... Um, like a final kind of read through tweaky type of one I could I can do up to like 30,000 words in a day so um (laughs) but that's like a final (laughs) tweak don't look at me like that it's like a final tweak you know it's like there's not a lot that needs it's just you know you're you're essentially like read and tweak that's what I call it so you know yeah I can read a book in a day anybody could read a book in a day so you know it's just like reading a book in a day (laughs) just tweaking a couple of sentences here and there so yeah it it would depend on which edit I'm doing I love that you have someone who's accountable because like that's how I love to write because I love having somebody else over there and I'm like yo what's your word count today and I'll be like I'm gonna beat that Yeah, it, yeah. It, the funny thing is, I actually I need more people because um, it's really difficult if you only have a very small if you if you are kind of reliant on having that group of people to be accountable with, then you need a, a big pull because you're not always uh, editing or you're not always drafting at the same time. And it, the thing that helps the most is having um, somebody drafting there with me. A really good second to that is for um, somebody to open O-Write and just watch my word count. I won't be quite as fast, but I will still be faster than if I'm just doing it on my own. I don't know what it is, but knowing somebody's watching, like I will, I will not be slow. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's Um, amazing. Because I I find that too, that it will be like, as soon as someone's there with you writing, you're like, all right, let's do this. (laughs) And it's such like a strange feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other question was, how many passes do I do? Yeah. Okay, so I fast draft, and then I will do my own edit. That will be a substantive edit. So I will be looking at, um, I, I will look at story structure, characters, pacing, order. Um, I will look at prose, but not, not, I won't 
unless it will only kind of be like really big things. If something's incorrect, if something, you know, if I know that um, I need to fill out a bit more description, something like that, uh, because the, the way that I fast draft is that I do not stop. I do not go back. We do not go over anything. So if I don't know a character's name, then like I type in capital letters, insert character name or XXX says or so, for example, one of my characters in uh, a heart game of hearts and heist was just called brother in capital letters for the whole first draft uh, because names are really important to me so I won't just randomly name a character they have to be named the correct thing so I would rather you know put like a moniker of like brother than I would put a name that doesn't feel right um so anyway so in this substantive draft which will take me two weeks I will do um all of the character development all of the uh, kind of pacing um story order story structure uh plot holes subplots anything anything to make it a cohesive whole um, at that point, it goes, goes to a beta reader who does a very similar job to a developmental editor. Um, but in order to make the developmental edit process quicker, I will uh, do this like beta read and, and she does it for me and I do it for her. And we're savage with each other. So <laughs> when it comes back, um, it's I then it then takes me it then. So here's the thing, right? Obviously, I used to do editing. And so the drafts that I produce, the the editing that I do already takes it to a certain standard. And then it really is only like the blind spots that I'm missing or because I've looked at something for too long and I'm just out and dry of like ideas. So when I get the notes back, it will take me two to three working days. I always leave a week in my diary, but really it takes me two to three working days to do um, her edits. At that point, it then goes to my editor and I will do, um, I hand in on a Monday, she hands it back on a Friday. I will do all of her developmental edits over the weekend. I hand it back on Monday. I get it back on Friday and she's done all the copy edits. And then um, it's done by the weekend. And depending on like how in depth the copy edits were, I will either take it to a proofer or I will send it to an art team to do the proofing for me. So that so that is the process. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that is ungodly fast. I'm I, I do. I'm a line editor and it takes me a long time. I'm very, very slow at it. So it's I, I don't think I could do it that quickly. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have I have worked with all different types of editors and I've worked with editors who take a month to do edits. That was about average. Um, and I have worked with, yeah, you know, editors that take two weeks. And um, I've just found somebody who's very quick. And because I'm quick, I need somebody who's quick. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it really kind of depends. And the other thing is this new editor that I'm working with, because this wasn't the old process that I, I went through. Um, she's incredible. Like, I haven't had an edit like this in years. And it's really nice to to be at a certain point in my career and know that I can write a good story and still have a developmental edit and still be learning stuff. So it's, this is just the power of editors, really. Oh, well, that's awesome. Excellent. Is there a process difference between your fiction and your nonfiction? For drafting, yes. For editing, yes, I'd probably say so as well. So do you want to know both or shall I just tell you the editing difference? Go ahead and do, go ahead both. And do both. So for, for drafting, um, I didn't used to but I do now write in order for the fiction and for non-fiction I absolutely don't write in order I uh non-fiction is like doing a puzzle and so to draft I kind of draft in in chunks so like an idea or a tip or a concept and then it's a matter of like the closer I the more words I produce the more I can order them and structure them. And so then I'll have these great big chunks which end up as chapters. Uh, but the, the hardest bit about nonfiction is the structure because you have to take somebody from the base foundation information through to how to solve this complex problem or um, you know how to write this complex thing. And therefore you have to layer up the knowledge. And 
I always feel like my brain is in need of defragging. So you know, like how computers used to store bits of information all over the place, and you had to defrag it. That's kind of the process of writing a nonfiction book for me. So like, as I'm outpouring this information, my brain is like defragging it. And I can then like pull all of the correct pieces together and put them in order. Um, Fiction, mostly I write in order. I say that and uh, I tonight I'm just reviewing the next few scenes to see whether or not I'm going to skip around. I, I wrote, I think, 18 books out of order. Um, and the last three, I think, have all been in order. And this one so far has been order, in order, but I don't know. So yeah, I mostly write fiction in order, I would say now. Um, in terms of editing, there is less of a difference Although I would say the fiction gets edited a significant amount more than the nonfiction. And I think the reason for that is that nonfiction is very fact based or, or like very um, informational based. Like obviously craft is not really fact. Like there are no rules. You can break all of the rules. But you know what I mean when I say fact? It's more like that kind of hard line information. It's not like you're weaving art you know, um, and and I suppose there is a bit of that in terms of making sure your voice is good in nonfiction. But so once I have drafted nonfiction, I will do a substantive edit to make sure that I'm I'm leading people through in a logical, increasing level of difficulty through the book. Um, and during that, I will also add in like a bit more voice. Uh, so I will work on prose more in that draft. It then goes to a beta reader. I will make their edits and then it goes for a proof and that's it. I don't do any more editing on nonfiction than that. So it's a lot quicker uh, to publish. Do you find that it takes you longer to write your nonfiction than it does the fiction? Nope. <laughs> Just the same. Awesome. Just the same. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, non nonfiction. Fiction is faster if I know what I want to talk about, which is why it will sometimes take me longer to start because you can't just make shit up <laughs> like you can with fiction. So I have to, like, I have to have, I have to have the concept or the idea. I have to have the depth of knowledge. Like I will spend a long time researching before I start writing for nonfiction. Um, I mean, I input in the same way for fiction, but it's it's less brain heavy, I, I think, because I'm structuring information before I start vomiting it onto the page. Is there a process difference for your various pen names? Was Ruby Row a change? Can say more. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, did your process change? Or I mean, I, I know your, your sort of your attitude changed about how much fun you were having. Did that make a difference in your process at all? Yeah, massively. So before I would take six months to draft a book, the first draft, one draft would take me six months. Um, and I went through uh, develop, uh, Clifton Strengths coaching. Um, and over the course of 18 months, I have gone from an average of about 1700 words in a whole working day to 2000 words an hour. And that has literally been based on writing to my strengths. So both the content, the style, the voice, the process and the mechanics of literally how I'm getting words on the page. And and I, I mean, I, do you want me to tell you all of the random and things that I do? <laughs> Absolutely, I love it. I, I'm, sta it. I'm starting uh, Clifton Strengths uh, 101 uh, oh, next cool. Monday, so oh, uh, hopefully, yeah, I'm I'm in that I'm in that class. Yeah, so what I would say is that not not everybody should try to write this way. Like, I have a unique set of strengths which make me a bit uh, masochistic in how hard I push myself. Um, but hey, maybe people will hear these things and think that they're useful. I don't know. Um, so the first thing is that I write in a competitive environment. I'm number one competition, which means I am viciously competitive. Um, and so therefore, writing in a competitive environment works. What does that look like? Well, I use O-Write, so um, ohwrite.co, which is a web room where you can see your friend's word counts, but you don't know what they're writing. You could, you know, your, your words are private. And for so this kind of tags two of my strengths, my top two, in fact, uh, which is 
a competition and achiever. So achiever, for every 100 words, you get a black star. For every 1,000 words, you get a gold star. Fucking love me a gold star. Give me all the gold <laughs> stars, right? Like I will do anything for a gold star. So um, so that really helps, um, which is why often I write in there, even if I'm not with other people. But the other thing that works is seeing other people's word counts. I do not want anyone else to get more words than me. <laughs> Um, so I, I, and the interesting thing is though, I do try to write with people who can write faster than me because that pushes me to write faster. And so then that I do other things like, uh, I have a candle, I do a fresh candle. So this candle, not that listeners can see, but this candle here is my current book candle. And, um, I, I purchase 40 hour burn candles. So 40 hours of burn, because if I write 2000 words an hour and an average book is about 80 K. I need to beat the candle, right? So I light the candle every time I start drafting and then um, I blow it out every time I finish drafting. And you better be fucking sure that I want to beat that candle. (laughs) Um, And they're just like little motivation tactics. Um, Another strength I have is SIG, uh, significance. And so I love to influence people. I love to have an impact on people. And um, I love encouragement. I love when people cheerlead for me. So I will share my word counts on social media and people will be like, way, and I'll be like, way. Um, And that helps to keep me motivated. What else do I do? Another thing that I do is I know that I need to input and uh, I have input and learner in my top 10. So I have to be reading in the genre that I'm writing. And typically I need to read in advance um, of, of starting to draft couple of other things. I outline and then I outline again and then I re-outline and then I re-outline some more. Um, So I used to not start writing because I couldn't get the outline right. Now I will get to a tipping point where I feel like I know enough and I will just start writing because I know that in any draft, any first draft, I'm probably going to re-outline three times. So I will just let myself go um, and, and do that. Um, and there's other things that I'm doing, like using tropes as the skeleton story structure, because, uh, in tropes have innate conflict in them, which enables me to write quicker because there are certain beats and scenes you have to hit in, in, in a trope. So that really helps as well. Um, so yes, I would say, and also now, oh, oh God, how could I forget this? <laughs> the biggest thing that I've done is blend an understanding of the market with what I'm writing. As a number one competition, I love to look at the market, understand the market, know what's popular in the market. Um, Is that always exactly what I want to write? No, but usually what I can do is take enough of the popular items and blend it with what I want to do in order to make it still sellable. And I did not do that with my first series. And not getting the sales made it really hard to want to write the next book uh, because of SIG, because of competition, because of Achiever. So um, I, for me, and in order to keep me writing, I have to know that there's at least a chance to make money with the series. Otherwise, I'm just not interested and I just can't get the words out. So yeah, I would say um, that Ruby has been a real shift in, in every level from physical drafting to new editors to new like I will continue to look at the market whilst I'm drafting as well. Like it's a daily thing. I check the top 100 every single day and I look at um, my genre top 100 most days, I would say. Um, And yeah, so, but like it's giving myself permission to do that. Like that gives me pennies to know who's winning right now in the market, right? Like that is something that's really important to me because I want to be the fucking winner. (laughs) Of course. Uh, Of course, right? So in order to do that, I have to know who else is doing it and how they're doing it and why they're doing it and what is working and what can I do that's better than that. Um, And so, yeah, but I would not do that before. I like wouldn't give myself permission to do that. And so it's Ruby has been a, a, a lesson in permission giving, I would say. Well, you're, it's, it's always interesting to listen to you talk about this because I'm like complete opposite. I'm 24 SIG, uh, 30 (laughs) competition and 34 achiever. So it's like, I just don't, I, yeah, Yeah. I don't give a shit. Um, Oh, I love it. So it's, it's funny. Um, 
Okay. What's next on your editing journey? Do you have, do you have anything? What do you think you're going to change next? Do you have any idea? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to change. I, I, something changes every single series, every single draft, right? This last series was about writing fast paced, unput downable stories. Um, and so whilst there are some really nice lines of prose in there, most of the good prose is like banter dialogue. And like what's good about these books is that I've used tools and techniques to prevent people from putting the book down. So things like playing with white space, playing with hooks at the end of chapters, playing with um, secrets, things like this that keep it's it's story, right? As opposed to looking at prose. The thing is, is that I also really, really love prose and the art form of like creating beautiful sentences. And so my next challenge for uh, the next series is to blend a little bit more of that back in and to have slightly more, um, slightly, slightly more, because what I don't want to do is lose the pace that I have. Like pace is just something that is me. And therefore it's like the bit, the next challenge is to edit in deeper prose whilst not losing the pace of the story. So that is going to be an interesting one for me. Is that kind of what you mean? I'm not, am I answering the question? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you are. It's fine. It's, I mean, I, it's like whenever I ask a question about what's in, what's in the future, well, how the hell do I know, you know, but, but it's, it's always, it's always neat to be open to change as opposed to, oh, this is the thing that works. I'm never going to, I'm never going to change it because it's the only thing I know. No. And so the other things are completely agree. I mean, I'm top five learner, so I'm always learning something. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I have discovered is that I, uh, this is so, so At funny. least there's something we have in common. I'm number seven learner. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I, had the same problem with this current book, book three in the series, that I had with book two in the series. And that was, I went to start and I couldn't get the emotional tone right between the couple. And I was saying to my coach, like, why is it wrong? Like, why why have I tried to rewrite this four times? Like, what is going on? And and I was like, I, I can't get to the bottom of the conflict. Like, why is the conflict wrong? And she was like, it's not conflict, it's context. She was like, you don't know where they've come from. Like, why? And I'm like, well, why don't I know that? Why do I need to know that? Like, rah, rah, rah. And she's like, your, your context 33. So of course you're not going to think about that. So like for me, it's like, okay, all right, we've worked on the things that I'm good at. Now let's look at some of the, like um, putting that stuff into place whilst I'm outlining, like before I start, uh, rather than stumbling across that, like 10,000 words into the book and going, fuck, now I need to go back and rewrite like the beginning, you know, or whatever. So for me, um, this next series that I will be starting in September I need to give myself a bit more time in the outlining phase so that um, the drafting and editing is easier, I would say. Okay. Well, that sounds great. What did we miss that we didn't discuss that you thought about as you were, as you were reading what I sent you? Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Well, where can we find you on the internet? Um. So you can find me at sashablack.co.uk. That's Sasha with a C. So S-A-C-H-A, the color black, .co.uk. Um, and uh, on Instagram at Sasha Black Author, or you can listen to the Rebel Author podcast. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode. You can find every episode on your favorite podcast player and on YouTube. For transcripts, please visit our website at revisionwizards.com. They go live the same day as our episodes. If you'd like to reach out to us separately, you can find me at vegriffith.com and Miss Catherine at scribes-pen.com. Stay magical.